the Bible says, no man knoweth the year. Hmm. No, actually the Bible says, no man knoweth the day or the hour. Huh. Here's another objection that I have to the post-trib or pre-wrath rapture position. You see, non-pre-trib rapture believers have no need to live in a constant expectation that they could see Jesus Christ at any time. I covered a little bit of this in the last video. The fact is, if you are anything but pre-trib, you can pretty much date the coming of Jesus Christ. Now, I know the Bible says, no man knoweth the day or the hour, but the Bible never says, no man knoweth the year. You see, those people that go into that time of Jacob's trouble, they can date the time that they're going to have to endure by the time that the Antichrist shows up. When the Antichrist shows up and confirms that covenant, Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, when he confirms it, they know, I have seven years. Or if you're pre-wrath, then you have three and a half. They can time out how much time they're going to have to go through. See, so you don't have to live in a constant, expectant, I wonder if Jesus Christ is coming back today. So, you really wouldn't have to purify things. You purify your life and get rid of sin and stuff because you'd be saying, well, first, when the Antichrist shows up, then I'll be able to set the timer. See, that's another problem I have with the any system other than pre-trib. Okay? <clears throat> but you say, well, the Bible says that nobody knows the time of Jesus' return. Let's look about that. Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, know not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Now the fact is, yeah, you can't know the day or the hour. You can't time it exactly perfectly that if the Antichrist shows up, you can't say, okay, he showed up um, May the 1st or something, and I'll time it out seven years to May the 1st of, you know, if he comes this year, May the 1st of 2020 or something. No, you can't time out the day and the hour. But you could say, if the Antichrist shows up in this year, 2013, you could say seven years from now, 2020, will be the second coming. Right? You could time out the year, just not the day or the hour. But now I want to show you an interesting thing here. Turn in your Bible to Mark 13, verse 32. Mark 13, verse 32 says, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, know not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Now this is interesting because this will be brought up as a contradiction, or as proof that Jesus Christ was not God. Because you see, they say, if he was God, then he would have known what the Father knows. Let me show you why that doesn't work. Just kind of a little explanation here. I know this isn't exactly directly related to this video, but I just want to kick this thing while we're on this subject. First of all, where was Jesus Christ at while Mark 13 was written? On the earth. Correct? So Jesus Christ was not in eternity. He was in time. When you hit heaven, there's no time up there. There's no day, there's no night. You are in eternity. So while he was here on the earth, he was not in eternity. So he, he was saying, here on this earth, I can't know the exact time because I'm here in this time period. I don't know what's going on in eternity. Secondly, when Jesus Christ was speaking there in Mark 13, it wasn't finished yet. He hadn't died on the cross yet. The Jews still had an opportunity to accept him as their Messiah, as their prophesied king. So he was saying, I don't know when this hour is going to come. The Father knows because he's in eternity. He's not stuck here in this particular day, in this hour, and whatever. He can see what all is going to happen. See? All right? And <clears throat> third you have to remember something about the Lord, and that is, the Bible says the mystery of godliness is great in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. So what you have is, you have a lot of lost people that try to go through the Bible and try to find contradictions, you know, and they try to prove that God is wrong and the Bible's wrong and whatever, and Jesus wasn't God and all this stuff. Why? Well, because they're trying to understand God with their mortal mind. You can't do that. Okay, if we could understand God with our mortal minds, God wouldn't be worth worshiping. 
Okay, God is so much greater than what we can understand. That's why the Bible says that the mystery of godliness is great. You can't understand the Godhead. You can read it, you can believe it in your King James Bible, but you can't truly understand it. I'll give you a couple examples. Jesus died on the cross. God didn't. Why? Because Jesus is the body, God is the soul. And the Spirit is the Holy Ghost. The Godhead. Three in one. Alright? How about this one? When Jesus was in Mary's womb, the angel of the Lord appears to Joseph in a dream. And yet Paul says about, you know, the angel of the Lord or an angel of the Lord, whose I am and who I serve. The angel of the Lord is often a reference to Jesus Christ. So how could Jesus be in the womb and yet appears the angel of the Lord? See? You say, what is that? It's a mystery. The mystery of godliness is great. How about Jesus Christ the Lamb? In Revelation chapter 5, he goes and there's one that's sitting on the throne, him that sat on the throne, and which is the Lord sitting on the throne, obviously. Yet Jesus goes and takes the book out of his hand that's sealed with seven seals. And you say, well, I can't believe it. Okay, then don't believe it. You know, don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't believe that He is God and He died for your sins and go to hell. Those are the options. You have to believe by faith. And the Lord's not going to reveal everything to you down here. Why? Because you have to humble yourself. You can't come in pride and say, oh, I understand everything about God. There are things that you can't understand about God. There are things that you can't explain about God. Isaiah chapter 55. Let me show you a verse here. Isaiah 55, verse 6 through 9. It says here, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are, my, are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. You can't understand God completely with your mind. I can't understand God completely with my mind. It's not going to happen. But you see the first part there, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 7, Let the wicked forsake his way. You see, this Bible right here has thing, uh, something in it called sin. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. That's why the lost world, like the Muslims, they don't like this book. They don't want to be told about their sins. They're wicked, vile perverts. Many of them, sex perverts. You can look that stuff up. Muhammad was a sex pervert. Having relations with a 10-year-old girl. <laughs> you know, he was a pervert. He didn't want to come to this book because this book rebukes his sin and tells him that sinners go to hell, unrepentant sinners. Sinners that come to repentance, that come to Jesus Christ, they go to heaven. Okay, So you have saved sinners, you have lost sinners. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's just the way it is. But you see, the wicked don't want to forsake their way, so they'll look for excuses to attack this book and try to claim that Jesus Christ was not God. It doesn't work. Jesus Christ is God, and you aren't going to be able to figure all the things out about the Godhead. Okay? The fact that it says that the Son does not know the time in Mark 13, that fact proves that Jesus Christ was there, He was offering the kingdom, they could have accepted it. Okay? It was open at that point in time. So He didn't know the time. God did because He's in eternity. That doesn't mean that Jesus was not God. It just means that He, as a man, was here on the earth. Jesus had to die on the cross. God didn't have to die on the cross. You say, well, I thought they were the same. They are. They're the same, but they're separate. You say, explain all this. I can't. It's called the mystery of godliness, and it's great. You just have to get through that stuff if you're a Christian. Okay? But now I want to show you a distinction here. Remember what we read in Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, that no man knows the day or the hour. Watch this one. Okay, those are written to Jews. Okay, the time of Jacob's trouble. Watch the distinction here when Paul is writing to Christians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 5 says, 
But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. As Christians, we are part of Christ's body and will be returning with Jesus. Okay? We're not waiting for Jesus Christ to come down and touch down on the earth. We're going to be coming with him. And if we're going to be coming back with him, we must have gone to be with him before we come back with him. Duh. <laughs> you know, it's just so simple to understand. Alright? The fact is, these verses clearly show that a truly saved Christian that believes the Lord will soon be catching them away, yet the lost world cannot see the danger that they are facing in the very near future. And you can see that in the world. It's so amazing how close we are to the rapture, and yet the lost world, they can't see it. They don't understand. They just kind of go, Oh, I think things are going to get better. I think things are okay. I think things are going to get better. No, they're not. If you are a member of the body of Christ, you better get right for the flight. Because Jesus Christ is going to catch his bride away very, very soon. The church age is going to end, and then the time of Jacob's trouble is going to begin. And we as Christians, we don't have any need to know the day or the hour. Why would we need to know the day or the hour of the coming of the Son of Man? We don't need that. Why? Because we're coming back with Him. But if you are a Jew, or if you go into the time of Jacob's trouble, you weren't truly part of the body of Christ, then you better start looking for that day and hour. And you can know the day or the hour. Alright? Well, excuse me, you can't know the day or the hour. I'm thinking, you can know the year, but you can't know the day or the hour. That's what I meant to say. You better get saved. There's not much time left. If you don't make it with the body of Christ, you're going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble, and you're going to be seeing the Antichrist. I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I'm looking for Jesus Christ.